We're in. Hey, welcome to Norse Boundaries. Norse Boundaries. Oh, man. Tef welcome to Star Trek Pyatt. Oh, my gosh. I'm so sorry. Norse so, uh, for all of you who are watching and just like a few minutes ago, thanks for watching our muted version. Uh, this now has sound. So, sorry about that. Um, I realized that we didn't have sound. So, we fixed it. And now I'm realizing there's a smudge on the camera, so we'll fix that later. Uh, in the meantime, you are in a new area of the Shackleton Expanse, people, and uh, there's lots of uh, a, a new stuff in this undetected sector. There's like new supernovas, there's quasars, there's pulsars, there's, and it's super active. Um, unusual amount of ion storms. Basically, it's kind of like explorer science. He doesn't tell anyone, but dreams about it. Mm. Like, yeah. I, 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 I imagine so far, Oh, yeah, Vulcans totally dream. dream. They're very structured and organized, but yes, Vulcans dream. <laughs> I bet they're like the most chaotic things Probably. possible. Like, it's. No, Vulcans, Vulcans only lucid dream. Only lucid <laughs> dream, that's right, yeah. That's right. We're yeah. trained at birth. Nothing but control with the Vulcan. <laughs> um, Except once every seven years. <laughs> uh, on fuck, on fuck, on fuck. <laughs> Gee whiz. Okay, and uh, as as you um, as you kind of like start, you're starting to get a good layout. You've mapped out a good sort of like mapping route you're going to take, um, and you detect a brand new uh, supernova that's only a few light years away. Excellent. Um, yeah. So, do you want to go take a look? Absolutely. Yeah. Is it green? It's crispy. Yeah, it's fresh. It's a brand new. It's like fresh, like produce. So, great. Yeah. Super green. Yeah, you're. Uh, it's super green. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Your uh, your your science department. Uh, it's it's like one of them is friends with Beagle, and Beagle is obsessed with like, let's say '90s pop movies from Earth. So Beagle full on is like is like oh super green thinking that it's like the coolest thing ever and everyone's like we have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> they think it's a reference to fresh produce which still they don't quite understand because why would you need fresh produce just use the replicator it's Captain yeah. Voight since I uh, have history I indulge in 20th century you history you do indulge in 20th century history I get that reference so do I, I sort of just chuckle yeah. <laughs> my character has 20th century earth entertainment as one of his things <laughs> you heard Klingon with 20th century earth entertainment as yeah it? because the second time of the exchange he learned about it the first time and he's like these movies with your warrior god Rambo are amazing <laughs> good job so he focused on that. Have you seen Bruce Willis and Arnold Schwarzenegger? <laughs> oh, just the Your Rambo. warrior god Rambo. I love that. Yeah. Um, you all have your determination in front of you. You've got two today. Um, and uh, your two directives are, like, obviously the prime directive. You've also got explore the map and the new sector. And you, you've got make peaceful contact with new civilizations. Um, Some... In that case, Helms set a course for the supernova. Since I'm yeah. going to talk like this supernova. <laughs> I'm assuming we're going to have our <laughs> whatever you whatever set up you want, as... sir. I got it. Thanks. Sarah. Sorry, that was that was too much. What? So <laughs> since we're set up going for a supernova, we're going to have the modular lab set up as stellar cartography, or after. I think it was or... already set up for stellar cartography last. We had set up for something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can. Yeah, because no, yeah, it wouldn't be stellar. Uh, it would be like astrophysics, sure. probably. I think so, yeah. Well, stellar oh, cartography uh, actual phenomenon, works. probably. We had that one set up last time. So stellar cartography kind of is, uh, as far as like Star Trek goes, though, it's all encompassing. So you can use like lateral sensors for specifics within yeah. stellar, because you are mapping the system. So it would be a good one to use. Yeah, yeah, we'll just keep. Oh, yeah, that makes sense because we're mapping the sector. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. our yeah, we're set up for that until otherwise. Danger, so, big explosion. As you. <laughs> <laughs> As you, uh, uh, as you sort of come, get, you sort of edge towards the uh, the new supernova, the like safe D zone. Of yeah, the yeah. So you're not you're not heading there yet. You're like you're like you've made your you've made your, your helm lay in a course, right? right? And uh, you detect a small, um, almost like a metallic object in your sensor readings. How far away? About the same distance as the Nova. Opposite direction or like same direction? Give me a roll. <clears throat> it's only two normally, right? 
Two Ness. Two Ness normally in the ship supports for what? Look at my skills. You got a. Uh, uh, got the sensor thingy. Yep. Yeah, so does the ship. Da, 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 da. Okay, now we will go into the mime portion. I <laughs> hope you were paying attention at the first. <laughs> it's it's the first commercial break where we're gonna sell you shampoo. Alfred Reigns. Right. Oh, and then the ship. Oh well, re-roll that because technical expertise. Well, if that's this incredible, like, because <laughs> this would be sensors and science so yeah so everyone apparently, success apparently my dice camera isn't working so we'll figure that out after so he rolled a one and a six <laughs> and then i rolled a three. A one is a crit that's awesome okay it is coming from the same direction as the uh shockwave from the supernova and uh relatively the same distance as the rest of the shockwave and that's where we do this <laughs> Captain's log, stardate 47439.5. We've been searching this sector of space for a while now, and three days ago, Astrometrics reported a new supernova, only about 20 years old, on long-range sensors. I've ordered us into a distant orbit around the neutron star created and fired off several probes to measure the size and extent of the supernova's impact on the surrounding space. It seems the shock wave has been traveling at about 13 kilometers per second since the supernova which means that the shockwave itself has traveled slightly less than a light year at this point. The crew are busy analyzing the data, and I should have an update soon. There you go. So, for now, we're going to try some uh, basic, some, like, you know, intro tasks. So, let's get some reason and science. You can do control and engineering, other science tasks. And pretty much everyone could make something if you wanted to. Okay. If you can come up with a reason for it. Not a reason, but like, use it as like a way to, like, why would security be interested? Like, maybe it's against the, or tactical, right? Well, yeah. Okay. So, like, before they start their scanning, Sarah's going to try to bring in the um, ship to a precise place so that they can make Oh, right. Sarah's a helmsman, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, she'll do that. Um, and she reduces the difficulty of this by one uh, due to uh, if the difficulty impo is imposed due to environmental conditions. Uh, the difficulty is most definitely imposed due to the environmental conditions. Cool. So, um, Oops, yeah. Sorry. No, that's okay. Car carry so on. Uh, one success. One success. So that, uh, you, she she edges in. You guys can feel a bit of a wobble from mm -hmm. the. Um, but it doesn't seem to increase. It doesn't decrease, though. So. Okay. okay. Easy with my ship. Um, <laughs> so I am sorry. going to bolster the shield so we can deal with the stellar radiation that's going to be coming at us. Yeah, okay. Uh, I get two dice plus one for I know my ship. Nice. Careful, guys. Rocky water's out there. Well, I got 120. Nice. <laughs> you know your ship, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I got two successes and a complication. Okay. I... So, complication. Okay, so um, uh, we were using what? Sorry, I'm just bolstering our shields. 
Yeah. So as you're doing that, you the like it's just it. I mean, not every day you ride a shockwave, right? So I, some of the radiation is just kind of like creating difficulty. So all the shield, uh, anything with shields will have a uh, an added complication to it uh, while you're in the vicinity of this shockwave. Makes sense. Okay. So what I found out with that metallic object. Yeah. Well. Um, so there's too much happening at the moment for specifically the metal object, but would you like to try and like focus on the the actual phenomena for the moment? Uh, yes, I should probably. <laughs> I'll make a note: metallic object detected. Mm -hmm. We'll investigate lower priority. Mm -hmm. uh, well, yeah. they're both like they're about the same, but it's kind of like I, I'm totally gonna let you. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, I want to see if we can give you any more information first. Do you know what I mean? About the actual shockwave and the actual mm. supernova? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to just do a wide beam scan of the shockwave. Yeah, what okay. Kind of, what kind of radiation is it? Is there any unusual radiation since this is a fresh supernova? Cool. We might be catching something that <coughs> dissipates farther out. Cool. Ooh. There's two and a... 14. 214, okay. That's tricky tachyon part. Uh, I'm going to use sensors as my focus, so nice. that'll be three successes. Oh, three yeah, successes. And the, the ship sensors. It supports. All right. So four. And so four. So you'll get a uh, momentum. Plus one, because we're reducing the difficulty by one. God damn it. Also, yeah, I get my special momentum to ask questions. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Uh, wow. Science. Our science, science ships that can blow up most ships. So yeah, uh, first of all, what's the yeah? What's my initial scans do for just succeeding? What's my initial scans. I mean, um, <laughs> so the question he asked is what I do. What I do do. <laughs> so the star was once the home, uh, or was part of GCS GCS GSC six nine zero two seven TW four two. Uh, it collapsed into a neutron star, only about 10 kilometers in diameter. Star contains twice the mass of Earth's own sun. Um, and had the initial star been larger than it was, uh, it might have collapsed and fit into a black hole. Even as it is, neutron stars are hazardous to navigate and need to be carefully cataloged as their immense gravitational fields mean the escape velocity is about one-third the speed of light. So that's approximately full impulse. Uh, their time dilation effects our immediately surrounding areas are significant. Entering the gravitational field will mean a gravity complication of any engines task attempted within the starship's uh, systems, with its complication range increased by one for those tasks. Uh, what kind of re- is there- what type of subradiation are going out with the shockwave? I mean, your standard... Standard background cosmic. Yeah, cosmic radiation. Kind of slightly higher. Your shields should be good as long as you don't lose them. You, you're, you're having some problems with the shields as well, so... No. Uh, Not problems, just... I know. We, 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 I mean, I, I don't know if... Well, on the timeline-wise, we would have had that whatever shielding, but I don't know if it would be on the ship. Yeah. The one where you could fly into the sun. Oh, oh, you're uh, transphasic well, shielding? Tra uh, no, not transphasic. Well, maybe it was, was it? Something like that, but we wouldn't have had it integrated onto bigger ships by now. Yeah, but you're a smaller ship, so it No, might... but I mean, like, it was only on shuttles. Well, that was the initial yeah, test no, she of even, Enterprise. She even put it on the Enterprise, and uh, that was in Season 4, so yeah, yeah, you could have it by now. That's been about four years. No, I mean, our shields have been rebuilt enough times, so yeah. there yeah. could be issues, gremlins in the system. Let's say it's still in testing phases because no captain really wants to fly into a sun. I'd prefer not to. <laughs> I'd do it at warp. <laughs> do it at work. <laughs> Mission warp. is young, captain. Oh, warp, yeah. 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 Um, how, how much farther does it seem like the shockwave is going to go until it spreads out too far to dissipate and not affect local It's going to go a while. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so you start to get some feedback from your um, science departments. Um, In this instance, using my background in astro navigation and helms, I'd like to see if we can help plot a course, a safe course for us to properly explore this. Um, helm? Do you want to try and do a safe plotting course? Wow. Yeah, for sure. I can do it, and you can help. Sure thing. 
<laughs> roger, roger. All right, let's do this. Uh, improved impulse guard means reduce the difficulty of all impulse maneuvers by one. Don't know if that affects us plotting a course, but oh, good to know when yeah. we we're actually flying. I thought you were flying it. No, otherwise Sarah would be doing the work. Oh, sorry. It's all good. It's, it's still, it's still the that? same one. Ended up on the exact same number. Um, what are we uh, trying But I'm going to use my technical expertise in computers to actually okay. change this because the captain's got scales. There, there you go. Nice. Um, hey. <laughs> uh, I'm e gonna go with that's only three successes only. <laughs> three successes only? Yes, unless I'm using con as my discipline. You can you can tell how much of a jerk DM I am that they say three successes only, and the max you can get is five successes. So I'm just gonna <laughs> throw that out there. <laughs> Uh, okay, so y and you were doing the piloting, yeah? We were doing the astronavigation navigation to yeah. plot a course. So you guys got a really sweet, you got a really sweet, it's, yeah. Yeah, you're you're pretty proud of it. Sarah, I don't know, what's your attitude towards the captain? Like, are you like, let me do it? Or are you more like, oh, yeah. yeah. Happy to help. She so, gets to fly it, that's why. She gets to fly it, that's right. Yeah. I, I mean, Sarah's a crewman, so she's just happy to be on the bridge, really. True, true. Well, and like, is she crew or is she? She's crewman. Um, she's chief. A chief. Yeah. So she's chief. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So oh yeah, everyone plays multiple characters. Uh, everyone's got two for sure. Yep. And every now and then we throw in an extra. Uh, I play Beagle. Um, oh, I play Beagle. He's like Aww. awesome. Um, he comes through in a pinch. <laughs> he does come through in a pinch. Uh, okay, and now you can focus in on your metallic object if you want. Yes. All right, so why don't you give me a reason in science, and somebody can make a uh, ship sensor plus science. And my expedite notes will figure out everything about it. <laughs> okay. Show me your secrets. <laughs> I know how to use sensors. Kind of. <laughs> One, two, three, four. four. So only four. Four and the difficulty of, is reduced four to by five. One. Eighty percent. And the difficulty is reduced by one. Okay. Um. So four. Shoot this. Well. <laughs> so you find a very large metallic object shaped like a child's spinning top toy, but it's large. Huge. Like. Like, that's no moon, that's a space station large? Yeah. Cool. So for my first free question, mm -hmm. get up the science officer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Already forgot, huh, Tim? No. We're just sadistic to More hoping other. you forget, but that's I'm okay. never going to forget yeah, I that. Never, never that. Okay. I can do that. <laughs> um, is it giving off any power sources? Well, uh, it seems to be giving off unusual radiation readings. Um... <clears throat> That um, actually competed. Uh, sorry, I need you. You got your one free one roll. Do you get one free one every science roll? I get a free momentum that can only be used to ask um, questions on top of whatever I beat the difficulty by. Okay, so uh, you're you. So I got four successes. So what was the difficulty total? It was lowered by one, raised by one. There you go. All right. So uh, it's giving off unusual radiation readings. Um, it's a rotating disc 2,500 meters in diameter. That is big. Yeah. Like With vertical protrusions emerging from the center of both sides of the disc that taper t upwards for about 1,000 meters. Starting at about 200 meters in diameter and coming to a sharp point at the top. The disc is extremely thin, only about 40 meters in height. Random knowledge question. Anybody know how tall Everest is? <laughs> Uh, almost two kilometers, I believe, off sea level. So about it's about the same size as the Everest. All right, cool. Maybe three. Everest almost three kilometers up. It's pretty high, yeah. but it's not that high. It just it is. Yeah, I might be totally wrong, but uh, does it appear that there is? Is there like um, cavities? Is it solid or is does it seem like there's internal? Obtain wood? information. That was my second question. My Damn it! My second question um, I get for free. So there are obvious docking doors on the rim of the main disc. 
On the top and bottom surfaces of the disc near the doors are engraved. Um, I don't want to give you that because you're not close enough. Well, you got to figure it seriously, right? Like you're not. Um, you're not that good. Near the doors uh, are. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> the, you can you can detect doors, uh, so it's large enough to have a docking. Hmm. Captain, on top of the fascinating stellar readings of the supernova, there also appears to be a fairly large metallic object with what appears to be docking doors on screen. Uh, so, let's see if I can... Oh, you know what? I wonder... Is it threatening? I wonder if this... What? Is a, it is a lump of metal. What? It's my job. So, that's what it, That's what you see, everyone. It's not oh. what we see. No, I know. I'm going to show you in a second. <laughs> so, that's what you see. I don't know why I looked around. <laughs> See what? That's awesome. That, that is, is interesting. interesting. Double Eiffel Towers. Use space station. <laughs> Could be. I always moon. I'm sorry. I couldn't help myself. Uh, okay. No copyright infringement. <laughs> <laughs> We've done it twice now. Uh, it would most likely be a small asteroid. How, f hmm. how far into the supernova is it? Is it on the edge? Is it... I forgot what you said. Oh, um, so it's traveling at about 30,000, it's about a one-tenth the speed of light. Oh, the space station traveling yeah. with the... It's uh, slowly being pulled in by the gravitational field of a nearby red star, um, and it is in the path of the, of the shockwave. Shockwave, okay. Yeah. Oh, I think it'd be fascinating to investigate. Are we picking up any signals from it? That is obtaining information. Yeah, you know it. <laughs> uh, there are no signs of active propulsion systems. If it is a ship, it's apparently uh, off and moving by inertia alone. Um, there are definite but indistinct life readings. But these are difficult to nail down because of the amount of radiation and the unusual radiation that seems to be increasing the difficulty of all your sensors. Science from Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> Things difficult, weird particles. Weird yeah. particles when plot is needed. Well, is, are these weird plot particles uh, <laughs> preventing me from telling how old is it approximately? From this distance, yes. That's when Pyatt got meta on itself. Um, particles. <laughs> Sarah, can you take us closer for better scans? Uh, Zanny to Gurkhan. Mm, yes, Captain. We're moving towards this. Did, did you see on the screen the metal object thingy? I'm in engineering, so no, Captain. Here. Somebody send it to Kaka. Okay. Anyways, we're I'm moving. on it. Thanks, Beagle. <laughs> you print it out, runs it down. <laughs> yep. We're, we're going to be moving closer to this object. How are the shields? Uh, we're having issues with the radiation, but I believe they should hold. Mm -hmm. Okay, just be aware. Zanny out. So in fact, is this <laughs> is this station armed? Can we see any weapons on it? I cannot even tell how old it is. <laughs> Let us move into short sensor range, and maybe we can figure that out. I would recommend uh, pulling up uh, shields if we haven't already, sir. Yellow alert. <laughs> the shields are currently preventing us from being irradiated. Shields are at maximum currently, Captain. I don't know much more maximum you want, but I can try. <laughs> How did you get my rank? No, I'm talking to you. <laughs> From where? From engineering. Ah! I'm still on the no, comm. He, I thought no, I turned climbed you up off. and opened the porthole. Port yeah, he's got his sliding door. <laughs> <laughs> right next to you. Yeah, God, every time. All right, that's enough of this. Sarah, could you please take us closer? You got it, sir. Bring us in now. Are we going to roll for this? Okay. Hmm? Are we gonna roll to see if we can get closer safely, or no, no. Your your initial like roll was brilliant, so I'm not gonna make you roll another one. Um, your stats you want us to have more momentum. <laughs> I also forgot to tell you that my, my, our modular labs. Um, if we're doing anything in regards to what our modular labs are, it always counts as a focus in that. Oh my everybody. god! You know, you know, Jessica. I really don't know our ship anymore. Yeah. It's one of the most impressive ships in the entire Klingon Defense Force. I think you really need to have a, like, <laughs> five hour I've modified it. What did he just say? <laughs> yeah. I, I believe, Captain, after Gurkhan has been on here for long enough, 
We have different everything on the ship than when it was first commissioned. Crewman, blue shirt, just give me a call. Five years from now, it looks like a bird of prey. <laughs> Are we in sensor range yet? Coffee. Oh! <laughs> fist bumps to Crewman. Also, thanks, sir. I appreciate the fist bump. <laughs> and he <laughs> just, just blocks away. Um, he just fist bumps the coffee. <laughs> Splashes. Uh, no, no, sir, there's only hazelnut. That, it's side. that really sweet blend that you like. But the hazelnut. The hazelnut, yeah. <laughs> um, Science officers are better than you somewhere else, sir. Maybe than getting you coffee. You only have a replicator right there. That I would have to get up to the cabin. So chair. you start to get those like. Doodly, 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 doodly. Um, and yeah, and you realize that uh, uh, you. So you're starting. You're all starting to get readings. So. Um, I want to do this. I'm going to say them out loud, but I want you to try and role play them, okay? Mm. So you detect this thing actually has engines. It's not a station. It's a ship. Okay. You realize that the thing is... It's a, it's trying to enter um, an orbit about a few months from now, unless it changes course. Um, but that orbit is not going to be stable, and it'll like most definitely burn up from the shockwave of the supernova before it even gets to that point. But it seems to be trying to get around this red star that it's going for. Um, Sarah realizes that that is not the intended course, um, that maybe the, sh the ship was pulled off course, its original course, by the red giant. Um, and Your um, your doctor, uh, or no, your um, office Ricks? person. Oh, Ricks. Ricks. So Hi. Ricks, Ricks, uh, Ricks is uh, able to know that um, the radiation, the strange radiation field, is a trait that this thing has. Oh, it's coming from the ship thing. Yeah, and um, um, it's very similar to that of an ion storm. Uh, so it'll increase the difficulty of sensor and communication tasks. Once you're within about 20,000 kilometers, you figure that'll increase. Captain, Mr. Sofak, Captain, Mr. Sofak. One sec. Oh. You'll need to get within 20 kilometers, 20,000 kilometers in order to get proper scans and do anything realistic within this. I'm coming up to the engineering station on the bridge. Okay. Because this is cool. And share away. Captain, Captain, Mr. Sofek, Captain, Mr. Sofek, Mr. Sofek, hi. Please answer him. <laughs> <laughs> Just letting you know that the, 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 the station ship thingy is putting off like I, I, I and storm levels of radiation. It's going to complicate uh, uh, a lot of sensors and communications. Just thought yeah. you should know. Everything seems to affect <laughs> sensors in this area. Hello, Mr. Gakan. Uh, Captain, I'd like to report that that station is actually a ship. And then I go to my engineering station. Well, <laughs> hell, that makes sense. I I can see that it would be uh, it was pulled off course. That ends. Probably by that red giant. Pulled off course. So you, do, are you able to determine where it came from? A direction, at least. I can take a look, sir, but I doubt it. <laughs> Sarah, I always appreciate your candor. <laughs> As I look up and see the GM's face. Yes. <laughs> It appears to be currently attempting to create an orbit around the red giant. However, it will not complete it for a few months, before which time the supernova will have obliterated it. You say it's attempting to solidify an orbit. Do you, did it just float in there, or is it actually under power? I just said it had engines, Captain. <laughs> that doesn't mean they're on Gurkhan. It that, has that's engines. how you scan for engines to see if they're on or not. <laughs> Otherwise, they're just metal <laughs> tubes. It doesn't look like they're <laughs> operational, though. Thank you, Sarah. You always come back. Anytime, sir. It is feasible they do not have enough power to escape the gravitational pull of the red giant. It is a fairly large vessel. Let's see. Uh, All right. Upon further investigation, they appear to be fusion engines, not capable of light speed travel. Interesting. So they took a while to get here. A long time. How close do we have to get to this thing to actually understand what's going on? Within 20,000 kilometers. Captain! Captain. That's going to be a problem, <laughs> just letting you know. Well, I can bring us in tight, but our sensors might not work. Well, let's 
take it easy as she goes. Take us within 20,000 kilometers and we'll, uh, we'll adjust once we get there. I get up from my station and I go, Captain, I'm going to be in engineering working the shields. I'm glad I'm you're taking a to tour. Like I'll ship. be honest with you, leaving you on the bridge is probably okay. Okay. Um, you can do anything you need to do, and this way you're within the communication. You'll be like up to speed on the conversation. Well, I'm just assuming that I've already hardwired myself into the captain's communications and have an earbud. Jesus, <laughs> how, how does the subdermal input? Did you get the doctor on board? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was sleeping. Yeah. The, the doctor's the captain while he was sleeping. Yeah. 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 100%. He believes it's trying to shut the voices out, yeah. but it's just giving me access to them. Captain, Jesus. I could also attempt to cool. modify the deflector array to cut down on some of this ion storm radiation coming from the vessel. Permission granted. I'm going to do that. Okay. See if I can beat your plot hole in <laughs> is that the new element? <laughs> yeah. Plot holium? So I will burn a determination okay. by my strange radiation to make it more difficult. Are you all just throwing things in the box? <laughs> <laughs> I'm buying an extra dice. <laughs> um, Gurkhan's literally like, staring at him longing like, ask for my help. Ask for my help. <laughs> <laughs> I want to work on the ship. Ask for my help. I want to show you all the cool things that I did. <laughs> Gurkhan's just like boozy 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 boozy. Gurkhan, if you could siphon yes. what power you can <laughs> from the shield that you require for the shield array to the deflector dish. Deck 7 has no life support anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I said non essential power, Gurkhan. Lights no, off. There's nobody on that deck, as far as I remember. Yeah. We only have the bar, 7 rear. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, nobody's in there. Which we haven't named yet. Yes, it's 7 rear. Hey, are there, are there people in the. We have one view. All right, give us a name for our our ten forward, our yeah. our, our our lounge. For Are the you officers. the viewer? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, six, six. <laughs> the maximum is successes? five. Six successes. Yeah. I got one. One assist. I had two crits and a regular. Jeebus. Because I have a focus and deflector. Well, I mean, I have a focus on shipboard engineering. Okay, well, here goes my counter, and I might as well spend another. Cool. Yeah, you spend your threat. <laughs> you spend it all. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I'll wait. Because <laughs> this has nothing to do with sensors, so no. Oh, it's a one. Oh, That's a one, two, a three, and eleven. Three. That's not enough. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you didn't roll three, three crits. So. Three ones. What are you happy about? If you did, I would have been like, that's pretty impressive. Now there's extra radiation. <laughs> <laughs> it came out of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. It's called the FU plot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, so, you're able to clear up the communications part. The sensors are not possible. You can transport. You work in the old transport, so you can transport. Oh, finally! So the ten sensors are like you're getting that that like nebula static is what's happening on the screen. You, you mean sixties? Uh, what they? Uh, rabbit ear? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Static. Yeah, yeah. Not hardcore, but it's like you can see a blip and then it's lined and really uh, Wrath of Khan style. Uh, yeah. Excellent news, Captain. We do not have to risk losing another shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah chuckles. <laughs> I appreciate the way you deliver information, you fucking jackass. We ready to go, boys? Are you trying to tell me transporters work? Affirmative, Captain. Yes, Carl? Yes, sir. I think this one's yours. Assemble a team. Right away, sir. Uh, Captain, yes, we sir. are going onto a vessel where our tricorders are no longer going to be functioning. Request you join us so you can sense the people on board. Hold that thought. We will sweep at least first. We will, but we need to know what's coming at us, and tricorders will not be working. Putting the captain in a dangerous way just to sweep the... Whatever advantages we have, we shall use them for victory. <laughs> well, according to the voices in my head, I guess that's a good idea. All right, Beagle, you're actually going to have the con for this one. Rix, watch him. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Don't you hurt. Don't worry, yet, the cop. If our past experiences are anything to show, they will shoot at you first. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, everybody wow. get EV suits. We're going yeah, over. Yeah, good. Yeah. 
Thank um, you. Okay, so on on the way, um, Sofek, you probably would be the one to point out that this is a pre-warp ship. Oh, by the prime directive. <laughs> yes. So while while going is probably a good idea, because they've definitely left their own solar system. Um, Unless it's the one that blew up. Well, I mean, even at very least, find out what's going on. Mm. Making contact may be a problem. However, you also have the rule, find new people. This is most definitely new people. Captain, uh, we have not detected warp engines, so I would recommend stealth until we determine the level of technologically adeptness of this uh, species, crew. Appreciate your stutter. Is there a... Uh section of the ship that is uninhabited that we could maybe get onto maybe talk to their computer see where they're from what they're doing our sensors still indicate that the vessel is there that is the best you will have out of the sensors. The docks like the docks do look empty yeah that was going to be my next question how are we supposed to transport blind onto a ship i was assuming there's an open area behind the docks We're assuming their docks in that cargo bay is full of supplies, boxes that we will transport into. I mean, if we're making assumptions, it's Romulans. <laughs> okay, so we as are in EV suits, we could simply as you, you get, top of it. as you get to the transporter room, um, your transporter chief gives you the final report for what you're about to go into. Mm -hmm. uh, it tells you that the ship clearly has no deflector shields active. Okay. Um, uh, and no signs of an ability to generate them. Uh, instead, it seems to rely entirely on thick hull plating, which can easily stand small meteor strikes or similar sort of space hazards. But as far as like um, like a starship weaponry, you guys, you guys, your ship alone could probably take this thing out. Um, Makes sense why they wouldn't go fast enough with the speed of light. They you do see a explode. There's been there's been uh, like reports of a few scarring as it's because it's rotating mm. as it's flying, um, and uh, do they even have artificial gravity? If it's rotating, rotating, if it's big enough, yeah, yeah, fair enough. But I would suggest that we mag lock onto the hull, and I think maybe we should transport outside onto the thing going through the airlock. It's been a while since I've had a good space walk. Just remember, look at the hull, don't look up. Last time somebody puked in the suit, I don't want to know who it was. But it was smelly. Once we got back, it might have been. <laughs> Jeeps, are we taking uh, Gurkhan or? Oh, hell yeah. It's a new ship. New technology. Let's mutated. see if I can make it. She's make got a weld a bat left to it. Yeah, number two, I gotta plays. see if this I can is, make this, this thing hit work. Right. Um. <laughs> if I could your, what's your security officer's name again? Um, Luther. Luther. Okay. Luther, uh, well, the way that I have Luther designed is he's mainly the chief in the brig. Mm. So he's the main guy who's like, hey, you're in jail. You're not getting <laughs> out. <laughs> so you've got your engineering kit? Oh, yeah. I got my engineering kit. I don't have a boot knife because the boot knife will be inside my spacesuit so it doesn't work. Okay. Uh, your doctor's there. Oh, uh, bye. Maya. Um, which she, yeah, I'll, I'll play her. Cool. She's always like just attitude right? Pretty, Pretty much. Good. Bajoran attitude. Bajoran attitude. She's like, yeah. uh, like our Ensign Row, right? Yeah. Not yeah. quite that. Not quite that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, so I, you guys stand on the five of you stand on the pad. Uh, your <laughs> chief and tra transport officer is, yep. We do the whole kneeling thing. Yeah, probably would too. Um, and as you, you rematerialize. You feel uh, you feel your meg boots snap on, um, and you feel the most. You're definitely not on artificial gravity, so it's not spinning fast enough to create any kind of a uh, gravity. Mm. Okay. Um, and then what is the point? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you realize that this is the hangar bay. Um, um, and you can see the open doors behind you. You can see your ship kind of like following on a geos uh, geosynchronous orbit around you. Um, and uh, you see the doors in the hangar bay at the end. Okay. This is one of those docks that you saw. Uh, I'm going to take point. Um, and I'll, I'll, sk I'll skeleton stay here. 
How how far between us and that door? Is it like a hundred meters? Yeah, let's say hundred meters. Sure, hundred meters. Um, sure, just get ahead, but no, it's not just computer. I'm going to reach out with my mind. <laughs> Is there? Markers. Other so there's that. there's too much going on. So you can detect everyone here. No, not like a headache. Just like uh, like there's like Wi-Fi. There's too many walls uh, for you to get through. Fair. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, I'm gonna like jog up to the door. I'm looking around, being cautious. So there's no power going to the door. Okay. Um, if you set up your own power source, you might be able to do it, or you might be able to open it manually. You do see an airlock on the other side. Okay. Uh, sure. Once I clear the room, I wave them over. Yeah. Like I'm just I'm taking steps, wave them over. Gurkhan, I think you're up on the door. Would you like us to have a power supply, or could we just jam it open? Do you have a choice. Do the right thing. Yes, Ikov. Well, uh, there could the be air inside. We don't know. Also, we want to leave the least amount of footprint. I was Absolutely. hoping you would just say power it, but yes, let's power it. There's also this duct here. I, as much as I hate so small it. I guess we'll spaces. power it. So it's a power requirement of one. I, I look over. You Pretty do sure not need your phaser. <laughs> <laughs> uh, didn't you, you brought your engineering, you engineering kit? I have an engineering kit. But I also want to give it no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Jury rigging. 18. 18. So, Don't jury rig it, then the door's broken when we want to leave. We'll yeah. leave it jammed open, and that will <laughs> vent all the atmosphere. <laughs> that let it get to power in the first place. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, then roll it. This is going to be daring and engineering. Okay. To get uh, two, um, three. Um, I don't have any sort of specific technology tree for an alien thing, but I mean, if it's. It's an airlock. Yeah, so shipboard engineering system. Yep. So three successes. All right. So as you do, it fires up. That's actually what you needed. Right. So it fires up and it does like you can see it cycle and you see the door seal on the inside. It lights just in this room. Mm -hmm. um, you see the light go red and you see you get like this sort of steam. Mm -hmm. I always thought that looked cool. Although it's like completely probably not scientific that it would show steam, but you still see the atmosphere coming in. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, the the thing cycles it uh, cycles out so it cycles properly and yeah you can step through if you like okay I'll step through first um, just it, is it big enough for all of us to go or is it one at a time two two pass through two at a time um, regardless I'll go through first okay. uh, and make sure that the hallway is clear yeah. Uh, Let's uh, let's send the captain in there too. I'll go through at the same time because let's lose the entire command structure if we this goes belly up. Yeah, he, he goes through with me. I just turn to him, <laughs> and then I'm smiling and not looking you know, at push him. Your, push him back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, I, I was All trying right. to get him there as well, but I went. Yeah, you, you probably back. the only time you'd actually pull him up closer to you. <laughs> but at this point, I mean, we'll be outside still because we couldn't fit through. Well, no, like into the airlock, you could all fit, and then through the corridor. Is that what yeah. you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, you could all okay, fit. Okay, I thought you said only two yeah. of us. I'm like, no, I meant, I, I meant the, like through the door. Through the door. Yeah. 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 Um, so the, the, the corridor runs, you figure, you figure it runs around the outer circumference of the disc. Um, it's dark, though you can see light fixtures um, along the walls are easily identified. Our EV suits have like, little yeah. flashlights, oh, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. So our tricorder. Completely useless? No, not completely useless. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pull mine out and I want to see what the atmosphere is made out of. Okay. Just to see how well I can work the tricorder. Yeah. Reason science? Yes. Two successes. Okay. Um, so it is a nitrogen oxygen atmosphere and there are a large amounts of biosigns. You can't get a clear reading on what they are, but there are a large amount of biosigns. Just to be clear, in the corridor we're in. Is it lit or is it dark? It is dark. Okay. Just want to compare. There's no power going to anything. Hmm. Here. Hmm. Captain, there is standard Earth atmosphere. I'm also detecting large amount of biosigns. Considering the technology of this vessel, it is a possibility is that the crew is in cryo sleep. Yeah. Gurkhan. Cool. You see, um, you see computer terminal stations every hundred meters or so. They're also out. Um, can you look up portable power generator in, like, a portable generator in your book and see how much power it has? 
because uh, you can use two power to uh, hook up to the systems and maybe provide light and activate the terminals. Those life signs you detected are macro life signs. They're not like markets. They can Correct. be contagions. I believe they are actual biological life forms, Captain, yes. So it's a virus. Anywho, that happens while we brought the doc. I think we should keep on the EV suits just for now. So the corridor has high ceilings, about six meters up, uh, which is a considerably <laughs> less than the height of the disc. So it can have multiple floors. Um, the corridors are like super silent. Like eerie. Mm. Like every step you make makes one of those like movie style clump, clump. So there's computer terminals every 100 meters, but have we seen any doors? Not yet, but you haven't gone very far, right? Fair. Um, I'm just, I'm being very cautious. So if we're moving forward, I'm like 10 feet in front of the group. Okay. Clearing and then moving forward. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. So let's go down the corridor well. Yeah. Gurkhan, if you and Sofek want to get one of those um, stations up and running, Yeskov, uh, Vaya, and myself, we're going to explore down the corridor a little bit. Try and stay in cons as best as possible. Do we have any luck finding a portable generator in the book? No, not that way. No. Okay. So then I'm going to give you... I don't have to make my... I don't have to do the engineering check to generate power. Do the engineering station check. And then would the power just come from the ship? From wherever I would bring it from, from device with phasers. Like a phaser can run a door pretty easily. Or I'd go to engineering and power it. Let's say your portable generator has five power in it. Unless okay. I need to give you more later. I never thought to math out the power because I never actually thought there would be one in it. Mm. Well, there's no so such thing as a portable generator. I know, that's what I mean. So, it might be in one of the other books. Yeah. Um, in other words, we've made it up. They're all in I mean, literally, I could just be jury rigged and it'll work. Yeah, 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 but it'll it'll break afterwards, right? It will be non-functional, not necessarily yeah. break. It'll be back <laughs> to where it started. Fair, okay. Which, I'm assuming this is a jury rigged situation. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, so you got that. You, I, uh, you kept going a little bit further? Yeah. Yeah, so 500 meters... In, there's a door going center. Okay. Like, you could continue going in the ring, or there's another door going into the middle. Okay. So Vaya and myself were following her, leaving those two at one of the terminals. Okay. So, um, would you guys want to try and set up one of the terminals? Yep. All right. Uh, give me a engineering task. Uh, always fun to leave the Vulcan with the Klingon. We get stuff done. Actually, you two really do work well together, don't you? Okay, so engineering task. Single scene plus one additional scene per momentum spend after the roll. So two. Uh, reduce the difficulty by two for jury rigging. Oh my gosh. Are you going to jerry-rig, or do you want to just set up your portable generator? I'm going to jerry-rig it, because this is literally what this is meant for. Okay. Like, I don't know the ship. I don't know anything about it. I just want to get this thing put on as quick as I can. Yeah. And then we can use the tricorder to download what we can as quick as we can. Okay. Um. um shipboard engineering? I, I, um, yeah, okay. Uh, three successes. All right. And difficulty is reduced by two. Go. You can take those back. Okay. And I'm going to extend the jury rig for two additional scenes. Nice. Okay. Um, so uh, you get static. So this the monitor comes on, mm -hmm. and you get static interspersed with random feeds of something with the sound off. Um, it looks like. Like you see, do you see people moving around on the screen, um, and then you see people kind of like, almost like slapstick. They look human. I'm looking at this, and I'm like, reminds me of something I saw on my first tour. I believe they called it comedy. Yeah. Uh, and it's really hard to make out. Yeah. Could could this ship be an entertainment vessel? 
Um, you want to do anything? Yeah, I guess I'll pull up my tricorder and see. If I'll run the images. Since your con has said it reminds him of something from uh, his first tour, mm -hmm. I'm going to pull the images and have the tricorder see if it can locate similar images. So it starts running uh, the running the images and, and like any of the wording you see through the universal translator um, and it will take some time. Or so good thing you did it for multiple scenes. That was good thinking. Yeah. I didn't realize it was that good of an ability now that I know it. Yeah. It'd be like, cool. Difficulty one. <laughs> you three. Uh, what's your doing? Uh, so we came up to the door that leads Inwards, yeah, there's right? a large door leading further into large the center door. of the disc. Okay. Um, I'm going to activate the door being on like this side yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, when it opens, I'm just going to... So the door's locked. Oh, yes. Uh, internal locking mechanism. Internal locking mechanism. Well, you could probably cut it with a phaser. <sighs> Do we want to break open this door, sir? I don't know what's on the other side of this door, but I'd rather not wreck a ship we don't know. Especially so, if there's somebody on it. Um, kind of hard to say. We come in peace, but we blew up your door. Yeah. With technology you may or may not have. Usually doors like these have some sort of safety release. I want to uh, like sort of look around the outside and see if there's like a panel that can come loose or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but it's got to be cut through. The panel, not the door, but the panel needs to be cut through. Yeah. Because the panel's locked too. Yeah, so you'd have to like open the panel with the phaser. It seems to be fused. Okay. Well, that's a lot less destructive than the door. So let's do that. Yes, sir. And I'll take out my Type 2 phaser and yeah. attempt to do the precision little... cut. Yeah. Sure. Um, well done, goggles, you know everybody. What? Poops and giggles, give me a roll. <laughs> okay. Um, that's pretty good. Is it with control and security? Yeah. So that's two successes. All right. So uh, you pop it open and... Uh, cha -ha. Yeah. And there is a manual release. Okay. Uh, I'm impressed you knew exactly how to do that. It's a lever, sir. Wrong <laughs> lever! <laughs> Why do we even have that lever? You super locked the door. Yeah. <laughs> it's extremely Another open. door shuts in front of it. <laughs> Whoa. Crap. Oh, Battle like. Angel and stuff. Yeah. Got it, got it. Oh. So the room is really dark inside. Um, and uh, your tricorders are reading like just a huge amount of bio readings. I'd oh, like yeah. to step into the room and look around with the flashlight on top of my EV suit. Okay. Why don't you give me a? Um, why don't you give me a reason and science? All, all three of us. I'm, I'll roll my. Rob's a medical officer, right? Hey. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I nailed that one. Oh, you nailed that one too. All right. So your med officer, she looks at you two and says, uh, "These are stupid," and she pops off the helmet. And uh, she reaches up and pulls down and kind of holds something and shines her light on it, and you see a green leaf, like a really big, almost like banana leaf. Huh. And then she kind of shines her light around, and you realize you're in a really, really heavy jungle. So we're in some sort of, um, er what, aeroponics bay? Hydroponics. hydroponics bay that probably was built because this doesn't have faster than light travel, so. Or replicators. Or replicators. Well, I'll take my helmet off then. Well, she goes, well, uh, okay, by the way, uh -huh. <laughs> as you do, uh, you get just the waft, like, it all It you smells like jungle. Mixed with, like, antiseptic, like, it's, like, it's overly jungly mixed with sort of that medical sort of, like. Oh, that, um, like, ammonia smell? Yeah, yeah. antiseptic smells of a starship mixed yeah. with, like, jungle, Rubbing and alcohol. it's like, yeah, yeah. 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 So. <laughs> Ooh, that's better than the coffee. Yeah, <laughs> and as you do, I need a control and command task. She was the one that didn't need to worry about it, because, doctor. Control and command? How yeah. many times do I have to tell you to keep your helmet on? <laughs> Two successes. Oh, yeah, you're good. 
So there's like waves <laughs> what are you talking of like about? You do, fruits you do, and other <laughs> plants, animal scents, powerful like sort of like just that strong. Uh, whoa, yeah. Smells like home. You Back on the farm. <laughs> <laughs> Do we remember the singing virus? <laughs> yes? Yes? Do you hear singing? No, but we have no idea what is happening. Keep your helmets on, both of you. The doctor kind of turns and shows you her uh, her tricorder output, and, and everything reading, like the readings are green across the board. Uh, yeah. so was, sorry, I, I, I guess I could have told you that first. It wouldn't be the first time the tricorders have misled us. But I'm more concerned about the bio readings in this jungle the trees i'm wondering how a jungle like this has survived in the dark where's the light typically plants need light don't they need the radiation sir so you're starting to realize she's like look this is crazy we should get sofek in here okay you two you two as you're like finishing your second scene um you see this head kind of pop around the corner not wearing a helmet. Yeah. And you see Vaya? Vaya. Yeah. She looks down and she's like, hey, Sofek. Need ya. By the way, don't need them. We both lean back at the same time and I'm... <laughs> Last time there was a global outbreak, my species were the one that died. I'm keeping mine on. There's a forest in here. Is there a drink in there as well? <laughs> <laughs> I try walking towards her. <laughs> you leave your, do you leave your monitor? <laughs> We've yeah, done what okay. we can with it. <laughs> Have we? It's on. <laughs> and, uh, you I believe it's, it's on. I've, I've seen this episode before. <laughs> you think you've seen the episode? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> Roll for cultural accuracy. Okay. Uh, let's go uh, reason and... Command? Yeah. That would be two oh, successes. Jesus. Yeah, you think you have seen this episode before. <laughs> that was about to fall down. Yeah. <laughs> Comedy is universal. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Sofek just sighs and starts the tricorder task running in the background. <laughs> and minimize F. He just leaves it on So the as you guys are adjust to kind of like the sense, you start to realize that there's noises as well. Um, and you realize that this thing is huge. Also, there's no company uh, still. So no. the... The, uh, it's clearly like you can't really see much but you can get that vibe that this is easily large enough to fill the interior of the disc alright uh, you hear the buzz of insects the trill of small birds um, basically less than what you'd expect for a wilderness of this magnitude um the plants and the trees as you kind of come in i'm just going to give this to you also my hell is still on oh probably yeah <laughs> I don't I, I don't just kind of like smell. points to her readings it's fine i'm not carrying my helmet around <laughs> 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 it is taking two hands to operate a tricord uh there are trees that stretch up 20 meters or more with the vines and uh epiphytes like Spanish moss that connect the higher branches in like a huge messy canopy. So you can't actually see the ceiling in most places. Uh, from the doorway, you just sort of had to step down into a steep slope covering several meters in, in height at a sharp angle. So uh, you haven't moved far without like having to roll for like tripping. Because it... It's... Uh, and the light is super, super dim. So we're hearing like birds and insects and mm. stuff? Mm-hmm. Huh. Where there are small animals, there are predators. So a single bite from an insect of an alien origin could kill you. We don't know what's going on. That's why the doctor's here. So if I, are you able to scan any of this for maybe like a structure that's not part of the outer hull? Anything that is not jungle? Yeah, I'm gonna pull up my tracker and find out like it's this jungle the entirety of the center spine. Yeah, sure, that's clear. Cool. Uh go ahead and give me a roll. Sure. He just looks 
down at his tricorder and they'll tell me everything. <laughs> <laughs> More or less. Computer. Uh, reason science? Yeah. Would this count as sensors? Yes, it would. Four successes. Wow. Okay. Well, we just see a wide beam go out from the... <laughs> what the... There you go. This will include my free one for questions only. Nope. So, uh, yes, it does fill the entire inside of the... Um, the spire. The spire. Up and down? Yeah. Uh, you get the feeling, though, that it's not necessarily to a point that it's more like, like levels off so you can be able to walk it. Hmm. Um, um, yeah, okay. So we can hear small bio life forms. Yes. Yeah. Am I picking up anything larger that is not Might bite me. That is not plant based. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, so there's too many bio signatures to like map anything out with the tricorder that's got radiation influence, right? So just, there's too much. Uh, there's just too light. much happening. Yeah, literally too much light. Um, however, uh, you are aware that on the lower levels of the same ionic radiation encountered outside the craft or inside the craft. Um, also, there's some large energy signals ahead, uh, signatures ahead, suggesting the presence of electrical devices drawing large amounts of power. There's no particularly clear path through the jungle. Um, now that we're inside, can I tell how old it is? Uh, it's pretty old. What you can tell is that uh, wherever this came from, was obviously farther away from the sun than planets you've been to so far. So almost everything in here uh, seems to have grown with this kind of dim light of uh, of planetary yeah. rays, right? Hmm. Uh, so everything is more on the the sun, like you get the you get the light coming in is more on the ultraviolet portion of the visible spectrum. So from your standards, it's super dark. But to what's grown here, it'd be bright as day. normal day for the rest of us. Yeah, well, so the, the plants like tend to run on the like blues and purples rather than green. Mm. Uh, though there are flowers of like different hues. Cool. Um, the entire forest has the location trait of near darkness. Uh, so that's gonna increase any tasks where you need to see farther than close range by one per zone. Hmm. And the no gravity would assist with the large leaves. Mm. There you go. Well, you said that there was a some sort of power source near the that direction, and I sort of point into the darkness. Like, Gurkhan, you bring your mech left? We might need to trim the jungle. I reach into my suit and pull out my boot knife, because you can't put a boot knife outside of the because it's not hidden. So I pull out my boot knife and I go, I have one of these, Captain. All right. You have one, too. Captain, I don't want to take my suit off. <laughs> I just cut cut yours out of your suit. I need the suit! I... I, I reach down with the knife. All right, I'll get, I'll get my... No, no, I'll get it. I'll get it. Okay. So I'm spinning a threat. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Whoa. that's not good. Mosquitoes. And, uh, Varya... Yes, sir. As you start to walk forward, hmm. um, a vine drops down from the tree, grabs you like a boa snake. Yeah, I'm on. And, like, so uh, for the visual, um, uh, you guys see the, like, the, like, you guys start to walk forward, and as you do, the, the camera kind of pans up and slowly, like, slowly pans up, and then slowly you realize that the dark sort of wavy lines are your TV doing weird things, mm -hmm. but it's this vine kind of slowly and quietly unfurling, and it reaches down, and just before it, like, like, and it does the whole, like, creepy down by the high behind your yeah. neck, and then it just kind of, like, really quickly lashes out and grabs you. Okay. Um, and as you kind of scream, yeah, yeah uh, we... To be continued. <laughs> so we will see you all next week with the next part of uh, of the adventure. And I forgot to say I'm sorry. Um, uh, that was my bad. Uh, this adventure is called 
uh, Forests of the Night, and it's written by Darren Watts. Um, so I wanted to make sure he got credit. Uh, so we will be back in uh, in a week, and yeah, bye. Bye. bye.